In today's video, I wanted to just kind of quickly talk about all of the games that I played in 2023. Um, it's something that I just want to try and think it'd be fun. I've been keeping track of all the games I've beaten since I believe 2019 is um, when I started keeping track. Yeah, 2019. So I kept track of the games I beat in 2019, 2020, 2021, 22, and this year as well. Uh, this is the first video that I've done like this, though, where I kind of recap my year, of the games I played, and kind of my thoughts on them, and how many hours I put into them. Um, I've played a lot more games than what's on this list, but I just didn't beat them, whether I dropped them or just wanted to try them out. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be talking about those. Just the games that I played and beat and talk about. It's just a little bit about the games. and So it's been kind of fun. It's fun to keep track of what I do with my time as far as gaming goes. Um, and there's a, there's a website. Excuse me. Uh, there's a website where you can uh, keep track of your backlog. It's called Backed Log backlogged actually backlogged anyway I'll link it in the description and maybe I'll show a little bit of it in this video uh, just to kind of show you guys um, where I keep track of my games and and hours played and whatnot I kind of have two lists I have the backlogged and then I've also got um, I just it's called Google keeps I just make like a list in that so anyway uh, with 2023 and these aren't in any particular order by the way I don't think these are in order of uh, when I beat them they might be well maybe they are actually anyway we'll just go through it so uh, the first game on the list is Xenoblade Chronicles 2 I actually started this game back in December of last year so a year ago today pretty much I started it uh, during my Christmas break when I went to visit my family for the holidays and uh, it's really fun it's a really fun game. I love Xenoblade. The series in general. Uh, Cole got me into it. He got me to... I played the first Xenoblade in 2022. Really loved it. Thought it was really fun. I think it's my first legit RPG I actually played. So jumping into Xenoblade 2, Cole had hyped me up and it did not disappoint. I think that the combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is probably my favorite combat in all of the series. Um, I think there's some things that Xenoblade 2 lacks that the first one did better as far as like um, exploration, uh, item collecting, things like that, which are a big deal, mind you. I think the, explore, uh, the exploration in Xenoblade 2 were, it's kind of a letdown. But um, the story's really good. The combat, I thought, was super addicting. It's very fast-paced, and I've, also, I've, I've heard people's opinions on this game that they didn't like the combat, um, but I think they were just doing it wrong. So there's a guy on YouTube, his name is Anel. If you get into the Xenoblade series, he's got tons of videos talking about the combat, uh, how to build your characters, basically the ins and outs to where Xenoblade is actually fun. Because if you play it wrong, it it, it isn't fun. It is not fun. But that goes to say with any game, if you play it wrong, it's not fun. Now you're probably like, well, I like games that you can't play it wrong. Well, I mean, then this isn't the game for you. It's, a, it's an extremely long RPG. Um, and I didn't even put that many hours into it compared to the, the first game. And the third game, spoiler, I played that one this year too. Uh, but I put 46 hours into it. Just the uh, the main, the main uh, game, not the DLC or anything. So put 46 hours into it. It's really fun. Like It's got a blade system, which is kind of like a gotcha. So you can basically roll to get uh, better characters, different characters. They have, they have uh, elemental types, and it all just plays into the combat. It's, it's a really, really fun game. Like I said, the story's incredible. I think the music in Xenoblade Chronicles, the trilogy, may be my favorite and the best thematically written soundtrack ever. It uses light motifs. It's able to connect all the games together through. It's just impeccably put together. There's uh, so much praise that I could give to Xenoblade, and I'm just now getting into the series. Really, in the last year, year and a half, 
So it's incredible. If you ever get some time and you want to dump it into a, a really incredible world story, gameplay, soundtrack, Xenoblade Chronicles, can't recommend it enough. The next on the list uh, is Dark Souls 2. I am a freak. I love Dark Souls games. I love Souls-like games in general. Anything that's relatively similar to that, I really like it. I love the challenge. I love the progression. I love the art style. The uh, extremely difficult boss fights. The unforgiving level design and trickery. Enemy placements. It's really fun. I think Dark Souls 2 is probably the weakest link in all of the Souls games. Mind you, I have not played Demon Souls. Uh, I'm going to play the remastered version eventually. I don't know when. I'll get around to it. But I think Dark Souls 2 is probably the weakest link. There's, there's things about Dark Souls 2 that I just genuinely don't like. Uh, I don't know why the developers did it this way. Um, I do know that the B team of FromSoft is who developed Dark Souls 2. Um, so there's a lot of silly mechanics that on paper sound really cool, but in practice just aren't. Adaptability is one of them. Basically, it's how many iframes you get. So the more you upgrade your adaptability, the more invisibility frames you have. And it's really hard to gauge that. Um, when you're developing a game because what if you don't ever upgrade your iframes so as the bosses get harder and harder and harder um and your timing it like it just feels like your timing is so off but i think the game is expecting you to oh at this point when you reach here your iframes should be at this level or whatever and as you upgrade your iframes you can get to where you basically will never get hurt again never get hit again uh, a lot of people when they play this this one I, I'm not sure about the other two specifically um, because your iframes are set at least in Dark Souls 1 I know for sure that your iframes are set um, but yeah it's basically the best build in this game is upgrade your iframes as much as you can and then run around naked and you'll never get hit again so um, that's one of them I think the enemy placement and I've learned through the comment section because I actually did a video on Dark Souls 2 titled why does everyone hate Dark Souls 2 uh, I'll link that in the description uh, but anyway, I learned in the comments that a lot of people are like, well, the um, the uh, Scholar of the First Sin, which is like the the ultimate edition that you can get, it's basically the DLC, but they've changed the game as far as like enemy placement. They, they basically made it harder. So Scholar of the First Sin is supposed to be for fans of the original that want a harder challenge, which is crazy to me because this game is difficult as is, but whatever. Um, that being said, I really enjoyed Dark Souls 2. Like, it's hard, very hard. Some of the level, the later level design is ridiculous because of the enemy placement. And, uh, yeah, it's, like, there's specific areas where it's like, damn, this is, this sucks. It's like the blight town of Dark Souls 2, some of those later areas. Which isn't really fun. Like, it's, it's more annoying than anything. And I don't know if I would ever go back and replay this because I've played it two times now. The first time I played it, which funnily enough, this was actually my first Dark Souls game as I played Dark Souls 2 first and then went back to the, the first one. This was back when I was in high school, probably 15 or 16. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever go back and play this one, Dark Souls 2. It was like I said, it's still a lot of fun. I think it's a great video game. But compared to all the other Souls games, I do think it's the worst one, comparatively. But anyway, fun game. I love Dark Souls. And I put in 27 hours into that one. Next on the list, we have Skyrim. I, I love Skyrim as well. This was one of the first games, one of the first kind of bigger open world RPGs I played back in the day. Uh, I remember playing it with my, um, my uncle and one of my really good buddies. They were the ones that got me into Skyrim. I love fantasy, so that's like my my favorite uh, type of fiction. Big fan of Lord of the Rings. That's my favorite thing of all time. So Skyrim, right up my alley. I think Skyrim's really fun. Uh, just base Skyrim in and of itself, I think is incredibly fun. You can dump hundreds of hours into that. Uh, playing different characters, doing builds, so many quests and side quests. So many different things to mess around with. They have a lot of uh, different game mechanics that even myself playing, I put 50 hours into this. Even myself, I didn't really touch that much with like 
alchemy, um, cooking, um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? You can, um, not cast spells, but you can enchant, enchanting, um, you can also craft armor as well, like, there's just so many different aspects to Skyrim, and the fact that this came out in 2011, so over a decade ago, and people are still playing it to this day, still regarding it as the best Bethesda game ever made, man, it's, Skyrim is such a blast. If you like open worlds, if you like fantasy, and you haven't played Skyrim, you need to go play this game. It's really, really fun. I think the combat is kind of basic and janky, but I don't I don't know why. It's still just a ton of fun for me. So, yeah, go check out Skyrim. You can basically play it on any console. I play it on the PC. Next, we have Modern Warfare 2, which is the campaign for the Modern Warfare 2 that came out in 2022. I did get the game last year, and I played multiplayer with my friends a ton, and I had just barely gotten to play the campaign this year. Um, from what I remember, it was fun. It was consistent with the Mar Modern Warfare 2019. But that being said, like the story's not that memorable. I remember the story of Modern Warfare 2 in 2009 better than I remember this one. I think that Modern Warfare 1, 2, 3, the first trilogy, is some of the best Call of Duty story. Black Ops also has a really good story. Um, I think Black Ops 2, from what I remember, had a good story. I've never played Cold War, Black Ops 3, uh, Black Ops 4, I don't think even has a campaign. So, I don't know. Call of Duty for me is... I still have a ton of fun when I play, but I'm not you know, itching to jump into the next Call of Duty game. Like, Modern Warfare 3 that came out this year, I didn't buy. I'm not going to buy. I've heard how bad it is, so whatever. Um, next, we have Xenoblade 2, which is Torna, the expansion. So it's like the DLC. I don't know. It's hard to call it a DLC. I, I am just going to stick with expansion because uh, it's like another 20 hours. It's I, I beat it in 18 hours. This was a lot of fun, so it's like a prequel to Xenoblade 2, the story anyway. But there's things that they did in Xenoblade 2 Torna that fix, um, I, I don't want to say fix, I don't, it just makes better, I guess. Not, not that it was like terrible in Xenoblade 2, but one of the things that I hated about base Xenoblade 2 was the, um, they're like, not blade quests, it's, they're called field, I think they're called field quests. So essentially, you have these characters, these blades, um, that you get, and you have to level up, it's kind of like a skill tree thing, but you have to complete specific quests to level up these, these blades to get abilities. Like, for example, one of them is like, I need you to kill five of these dragonflies. Okay, you kill five of those, and then there's one specific element of the blade skill that levels up. It's like, oh, you have your wind attack or whatever that leveled up to level two. Okay, awesome. Uh, in theory, th that kind of stuff is really fun, but what pissed me off is when you're playing video games, and this is kind of a hard thing to um, bounce around, is gamers don't want to put in work to build up something when you're just going to give them something even better than all the work they just put into this thing later. Because then it's like, well, why bother? Why spend all this time making this thing really good when you're just going to give me something better later? And that was kind of my issue with Xenoblade, base Xenoblade, with uh, the field skills. But in, in Torna, I decided that, okay, I'm actually going to... Um, I'm just going to do the field skills. But I was more willing to do it because I believe that you don't get other blades. Like, you kind of have set blades, and you just work with that. Whereas in base Xenoblade, you can get tons of different blades. So it made me more willing to do the, the field skill stuff, and it was actually a ton of fun. So I want to go back now and actually play Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and do the field skill stuff to upgrade my blades. Because I think that I will have more fun, even though I had tons of fun with Xenoblade 2. Uh, but I think I'll have more fun because I, I feel like I'm going to be able to play the game the right way for a lack of a better term. So, I don't know. Uh, Torn is really fun though. Story's really cool, really heartfelt. Music's good. Combat is is really good too. I love the combat in Torna. So, 
Uh, really fun. It, it kind of... It's Xenoblade 2, but better, in my opinion, uh, with certain aspects. So, uh, really fun. When you play Xenoblade 2, after you beat it, take a break or jump right into Torna, you won't regret it. Uh, next on the list, we have Tunic, which is... I played Tunic for beat it in seven hours. Man, Tunic is one of those games that is a ton of fun. It's extremely difficult because it's very vague on what you're supposed to do next. It's uh, kind of like a Zelda clone. Not kind of. I think it is a Zelda clone, but it's like an isometric view. You're a little fox guy that even looks like Link with a green tunic. Hence the name. Uh, but it's really fun. It's very difficult. It's kind of like Zelda meets Souls-like as far as the difficulty goes. Some of the puzzles are really difficult, but the kind of the main thing that you get is this booklet, which is kind of like your instruction manual and map. Um, really cool idea, but you got to have brains to to beat this game. Um, and throughout playing it, it's really fun to like level up your character. You get new items and whatnot. Um, tons of fun. Lots of really cool locations. The music is ethereal. It's really good. I love the music in Tunic. But there were points where I get stuck and I'm like, you know what? I, I have literally spent an hour dicking around trying to figure out where to go next. So I would just look it up uh, to, to advance. I'm, I'm willing to admit that I'm not that smart. Uh, I try my best to beat puzzles without getting any help, but whatever happens. So Tunic's really good. You should uh, go give it a shot. Uh, next we have Walking Dead Season 1. So I... This year, I wanted to go back through and play um, The Walking Dead because I think I only played se up to Season 2 when they were first came out back in the day. Really fun. Uh, so I wanted to go back and replay them. Play all the way through because I believe there's four seasons. I don't think I'm going to do the Michonne stuff. I don't... Hot take. I don't really care about modern day Walking Dead stuff. But when Walking Dead first came out, Season 1 through like 4, 4 or 5, I can't remember where I stopped. Just a banger. We would go over to my grandma's house and I'd watch... Me, my cousins, and my uncle, who was around our age, basically grew up as like a brother to us. Uh, we would always go over there every Sunday night, and we'd watch Walking Dead together. That's that's how good the first couple seasons were. Tons of fun. Um, but yeah, season one follows a little girl named Clementine and a uh, her guardian companion. Oh, I can't think of his name right now. Lee. Lee. Not Leo. I was close. God dang it. So we've got Lee and Clementine and... I'm not going to spoil it, but they go on adventures. Lots of stuff happens. It's like a point and click almost uh, because you're going through selecting different uh, dialogue things, different choices. It's one of those choice based games. Really fun though. Like Walking Dead season one slaps. Um, I don't really remember much about season two. I think season one has a very big impact. So really fun. Like I said, I'm not going to say much about it. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't played it. But if you like Walking Dead, you should go give this a shot. I put about 10 hours into this one. Next on the list is a game that's been on my backlog for years because I love platformers, and this is Ori and the Blind Forest. I played through this game very quickly. Uh, I got really addicted to it, and I probably beat it in a couple days within within the same week uh, because it was tons of fun. The music's great. It's uh, kind of like, like one of those Metroidvanias platformers where you have this massive connected map and you go through and collect items, you get power-ups, and it's ridiculously fun. Sorry. Uh, it's tons of fun. Like, I loved Ori. I loved the movement. I loved everything about it. Um, there's there's a story there. I don't remember much about it. I didn't really care about it that much, I, I guess. Uh, but it's fun. I am wanting to play the sequel this year, too. So, uh, like I said, Ori, I beat it in about 11 hours. It's a good game. Next is a game that I was looking forward to for so long. Basically, since it was announced, I have been itching to play this game because I played the uh, original back when it first came out, uh, and I played it actually on the Wii, which is Resident Evil 4 the remake. Like I said, I played this back on the Wii, and man, this was the game that got me into the Resident Evil franchise. I remember seeing my uncle and some of my uncle's friends playing the original and on the PlayStation 1, and it terrified me. I was I was scared. I was young, though. I was like, God, I don't know, three or four when they were playing it. And uh, when this came out, I was probably like seven or eight, 
maybe nine. I don't remember when exactly I got it on the Wii. But I remember my uncle had it and he was playing it. And I'm like, wow, this game looks really fun. Kind of creepy, really fun. So I'd gotten Resident Evil 4, the rest is history. Been a fan ever since. And this remake, this Resident Evil 4 remake, I believe is the the best Resident Evil game in the entire franchise. So if you have not played a Resident Evil game and you want to play one, start with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Or, or not, because it, it doesn't get better from that. Not that some of the other games aren't bangers, because they are. Uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is really fun. Uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake is it's more like a DLC slash expansion to uh, Resident Evil 2, although it is its own game, has its own story, whatever. Uh, Resident Evil 1 Remake was really good too. I actually really liked that one. I thought I would hate fixed camera angles, but I don't. Anyway, back to Resident Evil 4 Remake. I think it's the best Resident Evil in the series. It changes some things from the original story, so it it kind of, uh, even if you've played the, the original and you know it very well, you're going to get some new things with the remake. The gunplay is really good. Um, the collection aspect of it's really good. Shooting's really fun. It's it's uh, kind of goofy because if you don't know much about Resident Evil, specifically four, the game doesn't take itself too serious. It knows it's kind of a goofy, action-packed survival horror game, and the dialogue kind of reflects that. Very cheesy dialogue at times. So uh, yeah, it's it's really fun. You follow Leon Scott Kennedy trying to save the president's daughter Ashley. And you go to uh, a different country, I believe it's Spain, to uh, find her and save her. So that uh, that's Resident Evil 4, man. It's tons of fun. You should play that one if you haven't. Another remake we have on the list, which people have debated whether it's a remake or remaster, is Metroid Prime. Oh, and by the way, I put 24 hours into Resident Evil 4 remake, so... Uh, but Re Metroid Prime, we... Uh, man, I... I remember watching my uncle play this back in the day on the GameCube. Uh, is It looked like a lot of fun, but I never really got a chance to play it back then. I mean, I was kind of young. And it's kind of like uh, what I've always seen Metroid Prime is kind of like Halo meets Zelda. And you mash that together and you get a first-person shooter puzzle adventure game. And man, playing this remake, holy hell, was it a ton of fun. Like, the shooting's really fun. Finding and upgrading your gear, getting secrets and collectibles, that's really fun. The, some of the boss fights are really cool. The music's dope. And just going throughout the map, I love exploring in games, and I love map connectivity. One of my favorite things about Dark Souls, the original, anyway, it's just that map, that map connectivity and becoming so familiar with these areas because you're going in and out of them. You're checking the map. You're looking at, I need to go explore this area a little bit more or I need, I, I'm, I'm stuck behind this door. It's locked. It looks like I need a, a red beam. So then you're going to look for the red beam and I don't know. It's just a ton of fun. I love Metroid Prime and I'm excited. Hopefully they keep remaking. Hopefully they remake two and three. Um, four is supposed to come out eventually. Lots of rumors and leaks, so I don't know. It's it's a really fun series, and if you're wanting to play this, you can pick it up on the Switch. Uh, it's good. I think it's 40 or 50 bucks, so it's well worth it. And I put in about 13 hours with this one. I did not 100% it. I don't I don't 100% games. Uh, I've made a video talking about that already. So anyway, um, yeah, on to the next one. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, this is probably the most anticipated release of this year. And it did not disappoint. I put 90 hours into this. And it was a fun-filled 90 hours. This is one of those games that's so hype. That me and all the boys got it. And all of us were playing in Discord together. Streaming it. Uh, talking about secrets. We all went to different areas and locations starting off. So it was a ton of fun. There's so much to this game. It's incredible. They have three different areas now, which they've got Main Hyrule, which is where you're going to spend most of your time. Then they have the Sky Islands, which um, they're a fun little addition. They're nothing too major. There's some shrines and stuff up there, some secrets. There is a... Uh, there's the four main dungeon. Well, so you got the Sky Islands, Main Hyrule, and then underneath you've got the, uh, the Depths. 
The depths are really cool too, but it's kind of like a... I don't know, it's just more more exploration down there. Um, you can farm Zonite, which is another like ore slash currency that you need to upgrade batteries because they introduced building mechanics where you can basically use super glue and glue things together to make machines, um, airplanes, bikes. There's just so much to Tears of the Kingdom. It, it, it's almost like all the devs are like, hey, we made this really cool game and it's just a big open sandbox. We want to see what you guys do with it. And the community has done lots and lots of different things when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom. I think the combat is, it's really fun, but the the sandbox of the combat they've made better by um, basically making every encounter you do mean something. Because you go kill an enemy and then they drop monster parts and then you can then fuse those monster parts with your weapons to make your weapons stronger. And I know a lot of people bitch about the weapon degrad degradation. I think it's a really good thing, uh, in my humble opinion, because it forces the player to try new and unique ways of of combat instead of just using the Master Sword to go in and kill everything. You know what I mean? It's like, well, yeah, I found a really powerful weapon and damn, it broke, but you can go find more and make more every encounter you do you kill you kill that hard enemy with that strong weapon you just use and it broke during that hard enemy oh well that hard enemy just dropped a couple items that you can now make better weapons with too so i don't know i think it's really fun um the sandbox is probably one of the best in video games ever period i think tears of the kingdom is the greatest open world sandbox game ever not just zelda but it, it, it's so much fun uh they've made exploration way more fun because you can traverse the world in very unique ways there's lots of abilities they've added to um, make puzzle solving more unique whereas like in traditional zelda games you, you have to get from a to b and there's only one way to solve the puzzle in this one they're like hey you need to get from a to b and we don't care how you get there just do it so you've got a rewind feature, um, you can swim up through the, the roofs of things. There's just so much to Tears of the Kingdom. I put in 90 hours and I still feel like I've only grazed the surface of it. So that's going to be a game I'm probably going to go back for years and years to come. Find more secrets, more um, armor pieces, more combinations of, of cooking and arrows and... Uh, weapons that you can combine with lots of different parts to just man just have a blast of a time so tears of the kingdom like i said i think it's the greatest open world zelda game ever made it's got some flaws sure but it's it's a 10 out of 10 so it's a masterpiece next we have xenoblade 3 this for me was the year of the xenoblade i guess uh xenoblade chronicles 3 is fantastic um it brought back that that exploration that I really liked in number one. Although I don't think it's better, I think number one still is the best as far as exploration and collecting, uh, because they had number one had something called a collectopedia, which is basically a checklist of finding different items, and then once you find all the specific items, you get rewarded with something. The collectopedia in Xenoblade Chronicles Three, I think, is very lame, not fun, but. The combat was really good. The story's really fun. The music is fantastic. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, it, it's like taking everything that they've learned from 1 and 2 and bringing all of that to uh, number 3. You can cycle through your party members on the dime, but you can also change, like, you can change your character builds because of how they do it where uh, you go and find lots of different heroes that have abilities and your main main squad has their own abilities of like defense, attack, and healing, but you can change it. So if you want to play the whole game as the main guy and you only want to be an attacker, that's fine, you can do that. But if you want to play the main guy and you want to you want to change him to defense or make him a healer, you can do that too. Like the 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 freedom that they've given with party creation and Xenoblade 3 is fantastic. It's it's borderline perfection, in my opinion, as far as character building goes. It just gives a lot of freedom and power back to the player, which I really like. Um, you can also get Drip, 
where in uh, what they've done too in this, and I believe they had it in in one. I don't remember about two, but in a lot of games, it's like, well, I just want to wear the armor that's the biggest, even though it's the ugliest, and people bitch about that. Well, in this one, you can wear the ugly armor, but then you can set it to where uh, you look like you got the drip or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, armor wasn't really something I think I messed around with too much in Xenoblade 3. But the music's really good. The world is, is spectacular because they've added... Uh, it's basically taking... Like, there's lots of familiar locations from Xenoblade 1 and 2. Like I said, Xenoblade 3 is like taking 1 and 2 and combining it to make just a banger. So, uh, Xenoblade's great. It's a sequel. It takes place after Xenoblade 1 and 2. Um... I'm not going to go too much into the spoiler or into spoiler territory. There are characters that come back from uh, previous games, but once again, I think Xenoblade Chronicles is probably... I don't want to say it's my favorite game franchise of all time, but it's getting there. It's getting up there. I, I think it's my favorite soundtrack. Uh, I think it's my favorite world. Um, man, just the way that they've done Xenoblade Chronicles is just fantastic, so... Xenoblade 3, I put about 78 hours into it. I have not played the expansion yet, or the, the DLC. I'm going to probably be playing it sometime next year. So, Next on the list, we have Gears of War. Uh, I put it 7 hours into this. I actually played this one with my brother-in-law. He had heard of Gears of War before, um, but he never had played it. So one night, we just decided to play it, and I think we beat it in 2 or 3 sessions. I love Gears of War. Um, I think it has aged, though, uh, especially the first one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a fun, gory shooter. And when it came out back in the day on the Xbox, man, it was awesome. It just was freaking awesome. I wanted to be Marcus Phoenix. That's what I wanted to do. Grow up and be Marcus Phoenix because he's awesome. Uh, but yeah, Gears of War, if you haven't played it, yeah, it's a fun shooter. Get a buddy and go play it. Uh, next on the list, this is coming from my love of souls, which I had already talked about earlier. This was Lies of P. Uh, Lies of P, one of my buddies told me about uh, when the demo first dropped. He's like, dude, you need to play this game. It's a Dark Souls-like game, and it's really cool. You play as Pinocchio, you're a puppet, and there's a lot of west weapon customization, and well, and, and it's just Dark Souls. I didn't play the de uh, the demo, though. I'm like, I'll just wait for the, the, the game because it, it comes out on Game Pass, which a lot of these games I had played on Game Pass. Um, but this one was coming to Game Pass. I'm like, dope, I'm going to play it. And I played it for 28 hours, and it was amazing. Lies of P was so much fun. It's uh, It's got that, that blocking um, that blocking S combat from Sekiro. Which I did not like, by the way. I'm going to have to go back and play Sekiro someday. Because it was ridiculously hard. But Lies of P introduces that. Um, but they still allow you to dodge and, and all that other things too. Like it, it, It's kind of a main focus of the blocking aspect. And it's definitely something you should learn. And you feel like a badass when you do do it. But you still can dodge as well. But yeah, it's really fun. You're, you're Pinocchio and you go around killing puppets. And zombies slash monsters. It's really cool. The weapon combination was really fun. So basically you have your your hilt and then you've got the blade or whatever you want on top. So uh, the hilt that I really liked was it was like a um, oh, like a rapier where you poke. I, I like the poking weapons in Dark Souls because there's a lot of narrow hallways where you end up smacking the walls instead of hitting the bad guys, which sucks. And you'll die a lot that way. So I'm like, you know what? I want the poking weapons. So I got a poking hilt, but I was able to customize it with uh, however I wanted. And then eventually I found like this giant spear thing that that's kind of what I upgraded and used for the rest of the game. Um, it's really fun, man. There's lots of little nuances with this game that just make it fantastic. Lots of little gameplay tweaks. Uh, you've got this robot arm that has different abilities that you can put on there from shooting a flamethrower to a uh, grapple hook to an arm cannon um the one i used a lot too was like this electric zapper because electricity hurts the puppets it's really this is a hard game like i mean it's a dark souls game it's really tough tons of fun though man holy crap i loved i love this game so much and it's got those uh 
It's got like the good ending and bad endings depending on your choices that you do. Uh, you can tell lies, which is kind of fun because they're sticking with the the theme of uh, Pinocchio. Uh, Geppetto's in there. And they tease at the end of this game that they're going to do more. I don't know if they're going to be Souls-like. I'm hoping they are. But they're going to be doing more with like um, some of these fairy tale stories. And the next one they teased, sp spoiler alert. Well, I don't, I don't even want to say it. But I'm, I'm excited about it, so... Yeah, 28 Hours in Eliza P. Fun game. Recommend it. Next on the list is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This was my first retro um, 2D Zelda game I've played. The only other 2D Zelda games I've played, I played Link's Awakening Remake on the Nintendo Switch. Really fun game. And then I played Phantom Hourglass on the N Nintendo DS. And I actually played that back in the day. Uh, when I was a younger kid. But this was the first um, retro 2D one I played. And my god, this is like The Legend of Zelda's Origins. This is the DNA of what all Legend of Zelda games are that came after this, is Link to the Past. So when you think of Zelda, Link to the Past is what Zelda is. Um, it's got a really cool world, fun exploration, secrets... The combat, it's fine. It's very simplistic because it is a 2D top-down game that came out in 1991. But it's still incredible. This is the, the fact that this game came out way back then and has just aged like a fine wine. Like, even the graphics, they still look great. The music's fun. Um, Puzzle-solving, world design. Like, the world design's impeccable. And then... On top of that, they added two worlds that you can explore with the Dark World, and then there's puzzles that involve you going back and forth between the Light World and Dark World, and dude, this game just blows my mind. I, It's incredible that it came out when it did, and that it, has, it still has held up today. There are little things about it that I would say, yeah, that sucks, but it's because it's old. The game is old. It came out in the 90s, but like I said, still holds up. Um, is it one of my favorite Zelda games ever? Uh, I mean, it's up there. I still think that I prefer the 3D Zelda games. Um, but maybe that's just because of nostalgia. I don't know. But yeah, Link to the Past, fantastic game. Uh, go play it if you ever get the chance. And that one I beat in 17 and a half hours. So, oh, side note, I also played it on the Nintendo Switch Online. And I used the rewind feature a lot, so I cheated the entirety of it, basically. Um, I never died. Uh, I never lost any mini games, And at times, I never took any damage. Am I a cheater? Hell yeah, I am. Do I regret it? No, because Link to the Past is a very difficult game. Okay, we're getting down to the wire. Next, we have uh, Resident Evil 4 Separate Ways, which is the um, Ada Wong DLC. Man, it was fun. It was, <laughs> I played these two games like like base Resident Evil 4 and then the DLC. I think I played like six or seven months apart, maybe longer, and I just slipped right back into it. It was fantastic. The uh, I never actually played Fun Fact Separate Ways on the original um, Wii version that I had. I don't know why. I wish I would have, and maybe one day I'll go back and actually do that. Uh, but it, Separate Ways is fun. The only thing I dislike about Separate Ways is Ada Wong's voice actor. Uh, it's very jarring to hear, um, like, Luis, who's a banger voice actor, and Ada Wong having a conversation because she's very dry, and I don't know if it's her talent or lack of direction. I haven't looked into it that much because I don't care that much, but it's really jarring to hear, like, a, a C-tier actor acting along an S-tier actor and having them communicate. I don't know. It's it's the weirdest thing ever. Uh, aside from her voice acting, I think it's fantastic. So, yeah, separate ways. Go check it out. Okay, we got two more on the list. This uh, second to last one is Psychonauts. And I put 10 hours into this one. Psychonauts is one of those games that I've heard about for years and years and years from uh, platformer people that it's a banger. This is one of the, the best platformers out there and you should go play it. And I did. It took me about 
it was like probably I was like an hour and a half to two hours in and I was about to give up on this game I'm like man this is I don't know if this is for me it's kind I was kind of stuck in a tutorial but also like trying to get far enough in the game to where it opens up and I can actually start playing and uh, I I didn't really know where to go at times like it's 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 it suffers from being old but it's also intended to be that way because the game doesn't hold your hand like like it does give you options there are lots of options as far as like um, it shows you where to go most of the time but then sometimes it's very ambiguous and uh, you have to do I mean you have to, it's very linear in that aspect of where you have to do specific things like I'll give you the one that basically um, almost got me to quit but also cemented me to keep going as far as like after I had figured it out was at, at, at a certain point in the beginning um, it, it says I need to go talk to the agent agent Kohler um, and I couldn't find him I mean I found him throughout the overworld but it was kind of like a kind of like Mimi stuff because agent Kohler dresses up in disguises so like you'll go to one part of the world and he's selling you stuff and then you go to another part of the map and he's a janitor cleaning stuff and every time I go ask him he would just be like I'm not agent Kohler and I couldn't figure out how to get there well there's these underground tunnels that you can jump in and kind of fast travel to different parts of the map but when you jump into to it 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 uh Raz which is the main character I can't remember the exact line of dialogue it says but it's like I can go visit agent Co or something like that and it cuts off and it's like his secret lair anyway I had to go there and I just had stumbled upon it um one of my problems is I, I could have missed some dialogue like that game and older games in general you really need to read the dialogue but man Psychonauts is really fun it's got a lot of novel things that I haven't really seen in games since uh like there's one world where you're you're a giant in this world you're kind of like a giant godzilla even though you're just rex you're just a giant version of yourself but you can blow up buildings and then there's tanks shooting at you and they call you uh goggalore because you guys wearing goggles um this game's dialogue is really witty too it's like super fun it's man it, i don't know like psychonauts it took me a bit to get into it but i'm really glad i powered through I think this is a fantastic video game, and I think it's very underappreciated and very underrated um, as far as what it is, especially when it came out, too. It's a, it, I think it's an Xbox exclusive, but yeah, it's tons of fun, lots of abilities, tons of secrets. Um, the, yeah, it's old. Like There's things that I dislike about it, but overall, this is a fantastic video game. Um, and I'm excited to play through the second one this year, so that'll be uh, something that I jump into. So, and then the last one on my list that I beat, and this is a recent, uh, recently completed, is this is actually a ROM hack of The Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. It is called uh, The Legend of Zelda: Sealed Palace. Now, this uh, I stumbled upon this because of YouTube. YouTube teaches me lots of things by recommending me things that I am unaware of but the YouTube thinks I might like so they recommended me this Zelda video and it was a let's play of the Legend of Zelda Steel Palace which I had never heard of uh, so I clicked on the video and watched it and the opening the guy's like hey this is a ROM hack and it's a fantastic ROM hack of Ocarina of Time it's basically like experiencing Ocarina of Time, but different because there's lots of familiarity, but there's different locations. Um, lots of things look different, but there's still the same NPCs. You fight the same bosses. There's the same enemies, uh, but there's different music. Like I said, different locations. Um, the story's a little bit different, but also samey. It's really hard to explain, but I do want to make a video on it. I, I put 17 hours into this. And I was addicted. Man, it was tons of fun. But it was also, it was difficult. There were parts where I was stuck. And I had to go look at the walkthrough on how to uh, how to beat those specific parts. But man, yeah, it was fantastic. It, it was fun. It was like experiencing Ocarina of Time for the first time. Again, but, but different. Because 
it felt like Ocarina of Time, but like I said, I was going through, it's like the alternate universe of Ocarina of Time. So I don't really know how else to explain it. I do want to do a video on this on the main channel, um, hopefully sometime early next year, talking about this ROM hack, because if you love Zelda and you especially love Ocarina of Time, this is one that you need to play because this was fantastic. So, um, And then the last game that I'm playing this year that I want to try and beat, I haven't yet beat it, uh, and I'll just quickly talk about it because it's on my list, is Diablo 4. All my buddies got Diablo 4 back in, I think, June, May or June when it released. Basically, it came out right after Tears of the Kingdom, uh, and I was also in the process of moving me and my roommates, uh, we were moving to a different state, so it was, there was just a lot, and early June, July was a lot on my plate, uh, just family stuff, moving, and I didn't have time to get to Diablo 4. Um, I recently, for Christmas, bought myself an Xbox Series X that came with Diablo 4 packaged in, it was on sale at Walmart, that's a whole story in and of itself, how I even got it. But regardless, I now own Diablo 4, and I played about two hours of it with my friends, and it's fun. Like, it's, I, I've heard lots of good things and lots of bad things about Diablo 4. I'm a very casual Diablo player, um, so I feel like a lot of the issues that people complain about are, like, hardcore fans that play this game a lot. Um, maybe I'll get really into it. I played the third game and really liked it. I want to go back and play the, the Diablo 2, like, the remake version. Um, but for now, I'm playing through Diablo 4. Uh, yeah, it's it's Diablo. I like dungeon crawlers, and this is regarded as the best dungeon crawler series out there, is the Diablo series. So uh, I'm excited to uh, jump back into it, keep playing with my friends. It's a lot of fun, man. It's really addicting. Lots of numbers, colors. You're always leveling up. Tons of different places to explore and... I don't know. It's just a fantastic game so far that I've played, even though I've only put in a couple hours. I really like it. Um, we'll keep going into it. So, But that is it. That's my list of, of games that I beat in 2023. And you're probably thinking, wow, Sky, you basically played a lot of all the games, all those games you played you liked. Well, yeah, I'm trying to get away from playing bad video games. Uh, I have played them in the past, bad video games, uh, because I like to do videos on them. But... I guess I didn't this year. This year was a year of good video games. Last year was <laughs> interesting. Maybe I'll do last year. I'll do a games I beat in 2022. I don't know. But I did want to add up all of my hours in in gaming. This is just games beat, mind you. This isn't uh, this isn't uh, games that like I, I've probably put in way more hours of gaming because I've. This year I played a lot of uh, multiplayer games with my friends. I played a lot of Overwatch, a lot of Warzone, Fortnite. Why did I not talk about Resident Evil 2? Hey, I played Resident Evil 2 this year too. Uh, it's the remake. I beat that one. That's a fantastic game. Lots of really good puzzle solving. So add that on the list. Don't know how I skipped over that one. So the total hour of playtime that I've put into these games was 472 hours and 30 minutes. So that's pretty damn good. Cool. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening to me ramble about games I beat. What games did you beat this year? Um, I'm probably going to do a video talking about games that released this year. And then I also want to do a video talking about games that I plan on playing next year. Kind of like a, a backlog video where I talk about what I'm going to play. And then at the end of the year next year, I'll go through and... Uh, See which games I beat. See if I was able to beat the games that I talked about on the list. So that's it, everybody. Bye.